Enough. It's bad. I'm doing a bad job. I'm doing a bad job. One, two, three, four. Play now please. Play now please. Talking about the Oscars. It's Liz. Welcome once again to Late Night with Liz. I'm your host, Liz Sutphin, and I'm so happy you could join me. It's been a very exciting week here in isolation. I've left my quarantine Airbnb and I've finally joined my parents at their home. Now that I'm here, I'm finally starting to realize just how upside down things have become. I'm sleeping in my high school bedroom, but now I'm the one stopping them from sneaking out of the house. It's also been a busy week in the news. Ticketmaster announced that it's changing its refund policy. You will now only get a refund for cancellations and not for postponed events. So for all you type A's out there who plan ahead, I'm so sorry for your loss. For all my fellow insufferable procrastinators, keep crushing it. For my international viewers, Iceland has urged its citizens to hug a tree for five minutes a day to combat the loneliness of coronavirus isolation. The Forestry Service does encourage everyone to find their own trees so as not to spread the virus. Reasonable. This week, the Dallas Opera decided to punish me for being way too awesome by making me play Truth or Dare. You sent the truths and dares, and here I am making it happen. Here we go. Truth or Dare? <laughs> oh, truth. <laughs> what was your most embarrassing moment on stage? <laughs> okay, um, okay. Uh, I was singing Sophie and Rosen Cavalier at Glyndebourne. And there's one scene where I'm meant to rip off my outer engagement dress to reveal like a nightgown underneath. But opening night, I was so frazzled and so nervous that I ripped off the outer dress, but I also ripped off the underskirt. So that very highbrow audience got more than they paid for. So, oh. Truth or dare. There. <laughs> Sing a high note while eating a chili dog. I don't just have chili dogs hanging out at my house. However, if you do, I would like to know you. I will, however, sing a high note hugging a chili dog. Huh. Truth or dare? Truth. What is the naughtiest thing you've done on stage? <laughs> oh, um, okay, well, the naughtiest story I can tell on camera. Uh, in our production of Xerxes at Opera Frankfurt, Louise Alder and I were meant to get into a mild-mannered food fight on stage. But one night, I underestimated my strength, and I chucked a tangerine at her while she was exiting and pelted her so hard in the back that I'm pretty sure the last row of the balcony could hear that orange splatter. She did get her revenge the next night, I think. <laughs> Truth or dare? Oh, dare. Sing a high note while standing on your head. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know who thought that I could do this, I will literally break my neck, but I do know somebody who can. It is my good friend and guest tonight, Jakob Josef Orlinski. He may be world famous for being a fabulous countertenor, but he's also a crazy amazing break dancer and a hilariously wonderful human. Grab yourself a quarantini, find yourself a tree for hugging. Let's go have some fun. Okay, 
everybody. I am thrilled to welcome our guest this week for Late Night with Liz, the incredible Jakob Josef Orlinski. Hi. Hello, Liz. It's, it's, <laughs> really, it's really nice to be here. It is yes. thrilling to have you kind of here with me as what well. Do kind of, what do you mean kind of here? I'm like, yeah, you're, I'm in your living room. This is fantastic. Jakob and I have known each other since 2015. Um, we actually have a really great photo on a bus in Munich when we had to spend like seven hours waiting for a plane. Do you remember that this guy was like trying to, he told you like, hey, could you wake up your husband? This yes. is like a tour bus. I remember like... we were going by the shopping district and the, the tour guide was like, ma'am, you can wake up your husband now so that he can see all of the shops he's going to take you to. <laughs> And I woke you up. Oh, I was man. like, honey, wake up. On that little uh, kind of positive note, I would like uh, to, to, you know, just drink a, a little sip of this beautiful drink. Sure. Cheers, Cheers to you. I'm thrilled that you're here. I, I believe, like me, you don't come from like an operatic family. What was your path of becoming an opera singer? Um, you know, it, it, it's it wasn't easy it wasn't easy because my whole family there are artists but they're visual artists and um nobody's a musician so i was the only one i, I started in an amateur choir and then uh, i auditioned to my university and didn't i didn't get in but still i was i i was trying for three years i was studying in the like i had to pay for my for my studies even though in poland uh, you know studies are for free I, I worked in Germany for like a year and a half and then I went to, to America because <laughs> America is the land of dreams. Sure. I didn't want to dream. <laughs> so I just I just I just you know, dreamt big and, and I, 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 I I got there. I got to America, to New York, to Juilliard. I went to Juilliard too, but that's not where I met you, actually. Not the first time. I, we met no. each other at Ema. You had to come from Poland, I had to come from America, and we had to somehow find each other in Germany. But we found each other. I'm so glad, you know? My life would be so much different if I, like, haven't met you. Do not make me cry, because I will weep. <laughs> <laughs> we share a birthday to the day. We are exactly the same age, so... Exactly. I'm... I don't, I actually don't know, I don't actually know what time were you born, because I know when I was born. When were you born? Let's say it at the same time. 425. 25. 425! I'm just kidding. 524, actually. I was AM. Like, I was, of like, course yeah. you were. And isn't that still yeah. true? Early riser, and <laughs> I'm just I'm the slacker sister. And also, like, I, yeah, and I'm also like a late night owl, you know, because now I'm making a sacrifice for you, for your, like, late night show. Oh. In my country, here in Poland, in Warsaw, it's already past midnight. Yes, I should have mentioned that we are completely <laughs> international now at Late Night with Liz. Oh, I love the magic of technology, you know, that we can meet in one place here through the wires of like the internet. I do sort of miss... In that, in the, that I miss the old days when you used to just chisel a message into stone and throw it at each other. But I feel like those are coming back. <laughs> or or so, send a pigeon. One of the reasons I, I'm very excited to be talking to you is because you are always exactly who you are. And I'm wondering if you can tell people out there sort of the advice that you would have to always stay you no matter what. This is this is a nice point. Thank I you. always try to be myself and I always deal with things my way. Of course, I take advice from wiser people uh, or more experienced people. But the thing is like, which, which is like kind of keeping me going is like the excitement and excitement for the new and like the adaptation to the situation. So if we have this pandemic, which is quite bad and really sad because everything is canceled. I try not to focus on the sad part of it that everything is canceled and I blah, blah, blah. But like, I try to, to focus on, on the good parts of it. So like, I can be here in Warsaw. I can finally do things that I had, like, I, I didn't have time for. So now I'm, I'm literally like, I'm a magician. Like, I'm, a, I'm I, like, I made the best cheesecake ever. I'm not shocked. <laughs> And, and you know, like it's, it's, it's uh, you know, the confidence. Confidence is, is very important. I think there are so much time that we spend 
being told we're not enough or being told, especially in this industry, that we are too much sometimes. And yeah. in this time that we have to think about sort of who we are, I hope that we can all take the confidence to know that we are just that. I'm lucky that like I feel like I'm well-grounded, so I, I'm not really getting like depressed or like really upset that I'm like already 30, 33 days here in my little empty flat. <laughs> Where but, are you, by the way? Fine. Are you with your family right now? No, <laughs> I am not. <laughs> so my just... family is very close. We are living in the same neighborhood, but like I am, I am living in like by myself in a in a little flat. There are no furnitures. Oh, no. Like I have, I have only a kitchen, a bed which I had to construct, uh, like built by myself from IKEA. <laughs> Uh, but like, uh, but it's beautiful. Like I, I love it, and also like I will I will introduce you something because like uh, I don't have pets, but look at this. <laughs> this is Grazina. Grazina is my is my is is my flower. Is my ficus, and she she is with me all the time, and and she I feel like I have I have some some companions here. She's absolutely beautiful. Do you have any more? I was going to ask to be introduced. Rupert is a little bit upset, you know. Oh, Rupert! Is it because you have no furniture? Yeah, a he little bit, and also because I because I ate quite a lot of him. Well, that's yeah. awkward. You clearly have favorites. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like I like plants. I like plants. I have to say that. Have I, you ever really been able like to it. have a plant before? I mean, you're always on the road. No, it's not my first time. Liz. <laughs> you know, whenever I go for an opera production, it's very important for me to have some plants. So first thing I do in my Airbnb place, I buy is like a basilicum tree or whatever it is plant. So then you make <laughs> it your own by adding some greenery. That's a very Jakob yes. thing to do. No wonder you're always yes. so happy. You're always breathing some fresh oxygen. I think that yes. should be a, yes. an important thing that everyone takes home with them. Get a plant yes. everywhere Get you go. Get a plant and take care of it. And take care of it. Well, you know, if you're me, you might forget, but that's fine. Um, Jakob, I that's really fine. I really have enjoyed talking to you. Believe it or not, it's, it's a super short interview. Um, and I was wondering if you might be up for doing opera plots in one minute. Oh my goodness. Are you gonna ask me like, what is the plot of some kind of opera and I, I will have to tell you? Yes. <laughs> the opera is Xerxes and your time starts now. Okay guys, so Xerxes, um, he is the, the, like, the, the, the ruler, let's say, and he's waking up by the tree and he's like singing this super famous thing like when she's Ombra my Fu and everybody's like, oh my gosh, this is such a cool hit, like let's sing it. <laughs> and then we're like, okay, this is beautiful and it's just the beginning, so I guess it's gonna be fun. And then he has a, he has a brother, Arsamene, which I, by the way, I, I, I played Arsamene, I supposed to play because it was canceled, unfortunately. <laughs> but then there is also Romilda, uh, and Romilda is in love, sort of, with Arsamene, but then Xerxes is also in love with her, so there is a You're fight between seconds. two brothers. And oh my gosh, this is so little time to say all about that. And there is also Atalante, and she's in love with uh, Arsamene, and Arsamene doesn't love her back, but so that's why she's jealous and actually sort of angry, so they're all fighting, and this is so weird. This is so weird. It's a complicated story. It's like a Brazilian telenovela, um, <laughs> but it's great. Honestly, I learned more about Xerxes than I ever have, and I've been in it for three, three times. Um, okay. Our last thing. This I'm hoping that in this time, our industry can survive, can thrive. What would you say to people, maybe our age? who are having a hard time sort of understanding and getting into the world of classical music. The thing is just to try. Like if somebody is into classical music, then they will listen to it. But if somebody is just not really into classical music, it's good to just like give it a try. It's just to give it a listen. But like actually because of this pandemic, there are a lot of people our age, Liz, who are doing quite a lot of um, things online which are really really accessible you don't have to like pay for a ticket and go somewhere you can actually see it on Instagram Facebook or what
whatever kind of platform or YouTube. I actually produced already two videos from my home with with uh, with my friend. And yes. it's another kind of, you know, tool to actually make people listen and introduce them to something something different. I'm going to uh, link your YouTube mm. name here. Here. Oh my God, that's nice. <laughs> and uh, I know that you just wrote a song. What's it called? Stay home. It is going to be the banger of this whole pandemic. So please go get a, give it a listen on Jakob's YouTube <laughs> channel. Follow him at Jakob Josef Orlinski on Instagram. If you don't already, you should be. And thank you so much. Like on my Instagram and you can see like really cool breakfast ideas. <laughs> and it's spectacular. I'm telling you guys, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Jakob. I'm going to give you a cheers. Oh yes, give me that. Cheers. cheers. Yes. Stay safe. Thank you. Stay safe with all your plant family and hopefully I'll see you soon. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thanks I for hope tuning so. in everyone. Welcome, welcome to the part of Late Night with Liz we like to call Escamuggle. These are our muggles this week, my parents, John and Jamie Sutphin. Today on Ask a Muggle, we will be playing another version of This or That. You will have to decide whether what I am reading on these cards is something I could consume or something I might hear in rehearsal. You are going to buzz in on your handy dandy kazoos. <laughs> <laughs> Muggle. Is it something I could consume or something I might hear in rehearsal? The first word is Cerebond. <laughs> Heard in rehearsal. Uh, I think it's something you would eat. <laughs> let me call on somebody. Let me call on somebody. <laughs> yes, Dad. Rehearsal. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> You are correct! This ah. is something that I would hear in rehearsal. A sarabond is a dance in a Baroque suite, usually oh. in three. Stracciatella. <laughs> Jamie, that was you. That is something you would eat. Fantastic. What is it? It's like some kind of pastry. Is it? Gesamtkunstwerk. <laughs> yes, Dad. Rehearsal. <laughs> What do you think it means? I have no idea. It means a complete work. Opera, for example, is a Gesamtkunstwerk. It's got drama, it's got music, it's got dancing, it's got everything. Gesamtkunstwerk. And horns. <laughs> Cembalo. <laughs> yes. Dad. Something you would eat. <laughs> what do you think a cembalo would look like if it were a food? A strudel. <laughs> <laughs> it's an instrument. It's like a piano. <laughs> oh, no, no, not the one that I, no, that's a different country. <laughs> Is it something you would consume or something you might hear in rehearsal? Being an Eingang. <laughs> Mom. I think it's a uh, uh, rehearsal. <laughs> yes, it is something you would hear in rehearsal. It means the rehearsal stage door. But honestly, I think they're just guessing at this point. <laughs> Vondel probe. Consume. <laughs> what would that food look like? It'd look a little bit like a wiener schnitzel. <laughs> it's it is a rehearsal. Every one of them's a rehearsal. <laughs> Gewurztraminer. <laughs> Yes, Mom. I think it is a food <laughs> product. What do you think it is? It's it's it's, it's like a a, a, vorst, a vorst. It's like a vorst. It is a sweet German wine, <laughs> but it was close enough. Dunkelfelder. <laughs> yes, I, Mom. I think that it's a rehearsal term. You believe a dunkel? And what do you think we are doing? When we are called to a dunkel filter. We're doing a circular dance. <laughs> oh. What? It's also a 
German wine. Oh. <laughs> I think in your next opera, you should all gather around and do a good old Dunkelfelder. You heard it here first, kids. <laughs> Is it something I would consume or something I would hear in rehearsal? Ostinato. <laughs> yes, mom. I think that's a rehearsal term. It, it's like the end of a phrase. Oh, that's pretty close. It's a pattern that repeats itself, an ostinato. So if you didn't know then, you know now. We've got one more, last one, all the marbles. Is it something you would consume or something one might hear in rehearsal? Spanakopita. <laughs> yes, Dad. Consumable. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Yeah, it's a Spanakopita. <laughs> <laughs> I was sort of keeping score and then I forgot to, but I have decided that the loser is definitively my dad. Oh, come on, I think I won. Because here on Late Night with Liz, we always like to up the drama. This week, we've upped our consequences. <laughs> now say I'm your favorite daughter. I'm you are my favorite daughter. <laughs> and thank you so much for letting me participate in Ask, Ask a Muggle. Muggle. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight. I had a great time. I hope you did too. Stay safe. Stay home. Order yourself a unicorn onesie. It's very helpful. I'll see you next week. Stay home, stay home.